how you can uh, re uh, resolve the problems to give back the land to the farmer and the creeks and the river back to the fishermen. <coughs> As a stakeholder, you have a, res a responsibility. What, what kind of pressure do you have for the Nigerian government that they will take their responsibility? Do you want to finance an independent research about the impact of pollution on the health of the local um, people? How many percentage of your profit you invest now in corporate social responsibility? And the last question is, I fear that um, it is possible for you to have military enforce enforcement of the Nigerian government so that it will be um, um, possible for you to clean up uh, the mess. Let me do my best. Uh, obligation to uh, clean up and uh, remediate, absolutely, uh, regardless of the cause. We've said that several times and we do it. Um, there's a question about have we made a co positive contribution to society? Well, it's in the paper, but um, I, I think we're probably, uh, well, SPDC, the, the joint venture, uh, that everyone shares in this, is probably the largest single uh, corporate sponsor in West Africa. We sold almost 200, $214 million uh, in 2009. Uh, 17,000 people on um, scholarships and studentships these days. There are only two hospitals in West Africa that have achieved international accreditation in terms of the quality of care. They're both run by Shell. Uh, our AIDS program is uh, widely recognized as one of the best in the region. I can go on and on and on. But all of this is only um, a tiny fraction of uh, the problem. You mentioned power. Shell's not a power company. But we did build a power station, and we currently supply, believe it or not, that one power station supplies about 20, 25% of the power in Nigeria today. And we did that at the request of the uh, presidency. So I do believe we do contribute. I do believe we make a difference, uh, despite uh, some of the rhetoric here today. Um, compensation, uh, the, the uh, situation is quite clear that if the compensation is our fault. We will, um, sorry, if the, if the league is our fault, then we pay compensation. That compensation is paid, taking into account the value lost, whether it's fishing, whether it's agriculture, the, the amount, of the, the length of time that the land may be taken out of use, or whatever. Uh, we don't pay compensation if it's sabotage, because as we mentioned before, that gives a perverse incentive to create more environmental damage uh, to some sectors. Uh, percentage in CSR, I cannot give you that number for the Shell Group as a whole. I'm sure somebody can, but I can't give you it here um, today. Independent assessment. Um, in terms of hospital and remediation, I, I heard uh, an assertion today that we haven't cleaned up a single site properly in Nigeria. I utterly refute that. Uh, we are talking with NOSTRA, which is the Nigerian agency responsible for certifying these sites, um, as to their willingness to, to bring in an independent third, uh, international third party. And they're quite open to that. But we must get the approval of the Nigerian authorities to do that. We cannot impose these things on the Nigerian agencies. How prof profitable is it for Shell to stay in Nigeria? Um, you told us that uh, you get just a small part of the uh, profits of uh, the oil production um, and your activities in Nigeria don't seem to be uh, very good for your uh, reputation. Um, how, how, see, how see you uh, develop your future activities in uh, Nigeria? Shell is uh, well known of the different scenarios. Um, what, are the, what different scenarios do you have for your future activities in Nigeria? We've been in Nigeria for 50 years, and we'll be in Nigeria for much, much longer. Um, we, we've talked about, as we said earlier today, one company which has some particular uh, problems in the environment that operates, but that is only one company in three. 
I, I don't think of any scenario at the moment that would have Shell exiting in the short to medium term. And the only thing that would drive that would be if, we, if it was no longer safe for our people to operate. But that, as uh, has already been said, is a dilemma because over 90% of our people are Nigerian and they have nowhere else to go. So it's not a question of uh, just pulling out expats. That's not the issue. It's mainly a Nigerian uh, uh, business. You, you said that we have a local license to operate. And if you see the security issue you're faced with, would you consider you still have a local license to operate? Yes, I, I believe we do. I, I think if you had a fully representative sample of most of the communities in the Delta, rather than a self-selected subset, you would get a, a lot of people who would endorse that. My specific question about the court case of the Iyama and Google people from uh, 40 years ago, that's, I can read all the details, but I'm sure you know which court case I'm alluding to. I'm My direct question, is Shell going to comply with the, the um, judicial statements of the Nigerian court and pay up and clean up? Uh, I think the case you're referring to was a spill that occurred due to uh, military action in the Biafran War, just, just to put the record straight. It wasn't an operational issue at all. Shell had moved in to clean that up. Um, there is a dispute about access, about cleanup, which is often the case there. Um, we will do what we think is fair and reasonable through, and, and we, will look, we will achieve that through the court system. You wouldn't expect Shell or any other company or individual to agree to every court just, judgment if you felt it was wrong. And we're no different. If we think, if we think, years, 10 years in court. Mr. Craig, finish your sentence. So, if we think the judgment is unfair and wrong, we have the right to appeal, as you would as an individual. I can only say I'm disappointed because the, the, the rhetoric is we want to build up the system, we want to comply, we want to clean up. Shell's been in court for 10 years. It's not going to break the back of the company. It would be a wonderful gesture to say, yes, we believe in the Nigerian legal system and we're going to reinforce it. And I'm disappointed that Shell is not taking this opportunity to start making, as you say, further improvements in Nigeria. At the end of the day, though, if you have a case and you believe you have a strong case and you have to defend it, surely everybody's got the right to do that in the way they see fit. And I've heard twice here today that there's something wrong with Shell going to court. I found it really strange. The, the judgment is of the 5th of July of 2010, so that wasn't yesterday, which would have given you some time to consider. But I, uh, my, the answer of Shell is very clear. Shell is going to tie up the Nigerian courts for another 10 years of appeals and not. I didn't say that. I'm not too familiar with the case. But... Are you willing to cooperate with the organizations like Amnesty International to get uh, independent and credible data on oil spill? I answered it in relation to cleanup and remediation, uh, where we have made progress with, with Nostra. In terms of the determination of the cause of the spill, that is also uh, Nigerian legal uh, requirement. The, the Nigerian agency must determine that. Um, we cannot dictate uh, the involvement of others, and you can imagine the problems that you get if a, a third party came to a different conclusion than the official authority of Nigeria. Uh, we're amenable, always amenable, to having independent people to verify the quality of what we do on a sample basis or, or, uh, or otherwise. So the principle we, we can work with, but the legal system at the moment is that it's the agency, the Nigerian agency that determines that. Thank you so much.